Hey guys, welcome back. This is Cody with the Connected Camper. As you can tell, we are not in Iowa anymore. We are in sunny Colorado. We are near Steamboat Springs, where it's about 10,000 feet in elevation where we're at. We're gonna use this elevation as a chance to test out our Furman dual fuel inverter generator. I'm gonna get you set up a little bit better here and we'll get off to the races. All right, so as I mentioned, I have this Furman WH3200IE dual fuel inverter generator. At sea level, this generator is rated at 3200 watts surge on gasoline, 2900 watts running on gasoline, and then 2900 watts surge and 2600 on propane. Now we're going to do tests here today at 10,000 feet. Now, Generators normally lose 4% of their rated output for every 1,000 feet of gain in altitude. So in theory, this machine will only put out 40% of its rated load um, on these, and we're going to test that today and see how it performs. Now, this does not have a jet kit installed in the carburetor. It is strictly at its sea level settings in its carburetor, so it does not have the bigger jetting. Now the fuel that we're going to be running today is 87 octane gasoline and then just regular propane that you can get at any store. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this test started using 87 octane to start. We can see that our gas lever is down and we are going to be running on gasoline. I'm going to get it started up here. We're going to let it warm up just a little bit and then we'll get it off to the races. Now I am going to add solar assistant down to the bottom right so that way you can see the uh, output and the voltage that we're getting on this as I slowly ramp up the load. Now, what we just saw right there was this machine was trying to do what it needed to do and power my battery charger and my water heater. However, it dropped down to 76 volts and it actually didn't kick off. 
Now, at sea level, this is very good about kicking off the breaker when it does drop that voltage lower. At elevation, apparently it struggles. We get about 17 to 1800 watts of load on 87 octane. That is to be expected. If we take 40% off of its rated load here, that's about 70 or 17 to 1800 watts. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this swapped over to propane and we'll put the same load on it and see if it falls over the same way. All right, now we have our propane line hooked up. Going to switch it over to propane here. Our tank is on. So on propane, I would say that this machine actually sounded a little bit better than it did on gasoline. And there is actually some science behind that. Gasoline has to pass through those jetted, uh, the appropriately jetted uh, pass-throughs in the carburetor. Now, propane does not have to have a jet kit. Propane just flows right through the carburetor because it's in uh, kind of an aerobic state. So the propane actually ran better than I thought it would and actually ran the exact same way as gasoline. So if you're at altitude and you have options between gasoline and propane, it may make more sense to grab that propane jug instead of gasoline. So just like that, our 3200 watt inverter generator is now not much better than a 2000 watt suitcase inverter generator. That's all thanks to this altitude that we're at. Now, if we had a suitcase inverter generator with us, that thing would be pretty well useless. It would not be able to do much. It'd be able to keep lights on, but it really would not be able to do much for our type of camping. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this generator, I'm gonna run it on gasoline, get my batteries topped up for the day here, and then I will see you guys again soon in our next video. Now, if you like this video, or if you wanna see similar ones to it, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be sure to take that into consideration on our future videos. Thank you so much, we'll see you next time.